Welcome to the KZGN News. Today we'll bring you news about a fatal traffic accident, city council considering allowing chickens in residential areas, news from federal prison releases, the latest presidential polls, news from Sacramento, an announcement from the Naval Air Weapon Station at China Lake, gas prices, and much more. From the Rademacher Hills to Bee Mountain and the mighty Sierras, Ridgecrest to Inyo Kern and China Lake, this is your news for the Indian Wells Valley with the KZGN News Crew. Thanks for joining us for the news. I'm Tom Whitnick. Here's news affecting Ridgecrest and the Indian Wells Valley. In news from the Ridgecrest Police Department, we got word of a fatal traffic accident on North China Lake Boulevard. Yesterday at 9.55 a.m., there was a traffic accident in the area by the courthouse. It was at the intersection of North China Lake Boulevard and West Coastal Avenue. Ridgecrest police officers responded to the scene. It was regarding an injury traffic collision. Upon arrival, officers discovered a male subject that had been riding an electric scooter had been struck by a Toyota SUV. The male subject was transferred to Ridgecrest Regional Hospital. The driver of the SUV was uninjured in the collision. It was reported later that the man taken to the hospital succumbed to his injuries. KZGN has the name of the fatality, but will not disclose it until we are sure the next of kin has been notified. The victim was an older gentleman who was approximately 80 years old. The investigation is ongoing. Now here's a story from the U.S. Justice Department. The Justice Department is set to release about 6,000 inmates early from prison in an effort to reduce overcrowding and provide relief to drug offenders who some say received harsh sentences in the past. The inmates from federal prisons nationwide are set for release by the Department's Bureau of Prisons between October 30th and November 2nd. About two-thirds of them will go to halfway houses. More will go to home confinement before being put on supervised release. About one-third are foreign citizens who will be quickly deported. The early release follows action by the U.S. Sentencing Commission, an independent agency that sets sentencing policies for federal crimes that reduced the potential punishment for future drug offenders last year. The Commission also made the change retroactive. The Commission's action is separate from the effort by President Obama to grant clemency to certain nonviolent drug of offenders, an initiative that has resulted in the early release of 89 inmates. The panel estimated that its change in sentencing guidelines eventually could result in 46,000 of the nation's approximately 100,000 drug offenders in federal prison qualifying for early release. The first 6,000 figure is the first batch in that process. The Sentencing Commission estimated that an additional 8,550 inmates would be eligible for release in the next year. The releases are part of a shift in the nation's approach to criminal justice and drug sentencing. Along with the Commission's action, the Justice Department has instructed its prosecutors not to charge low-level, nonviolent drug offenders who have no connection to gangs or large-scale drug organizations with offenses that can carry severe mandatory sentences. The U.S. Sentencing Commission voted unanimously for the reduction last year after holding two public hearings in which members heard testimony from then Attorney General Eric Holder, federal judges, federal public defenders, state and local law enforcement officials, and sentencing advocates. The panel also received more than 80,000 public comment letters, with the overwhelming majority favoring the change. Holder supported the change, but he proposed more restrictive criteria that would exclude people who had used weapons or had significant criminal histories. But the Sentencing Commission decided to leave the decisions to individual judges. This is a huge shift away from incarceration of people that break laws to tolerance and acceptance for certain crimes. I wonder how release of 46,000 drug offenders will impact our cities. Advocates for these early release programs say past releases did not result in any significant increase in crimes. I wonder what their definition of significant is. In city news, the chickens are coming, the chickens are coming. Coming soon, chickens and other farm animals living right next to you. Do you want to have chickens and other farm animals living next to you at your home? Well, tonight's the night the city council will consider this topic. This is a heads up for everyone to be aware that this week's city council meeting tonight, they'll be taking up the changes to the Ridgecrest Municipal Code concerning what animals are permitted within residential housing zones in the city. Along with regular animals like dogs and cats and other home pets that are mostly kept inside, they are now considering allowing certain farm animals within residential neighborhoods, animals such as poultry and other fowl, including chickens, geese, ducks, pigeons, 
doves, and other yet to be determined. So if you have an opinion about this, you still have time to make it to tonight's meeting. In news from today's presidential polls, we find results from Florida, Ohio, and Pennsylvania. These are all must-win swing states. In Florida, we see on the Republican side, Trump at 28%, Carson at 16%, Rubio at 14%, Bush at 12%, and Fiorina at 7%. On the Democrat side, we see Clinton at 43%, Biden at 19%, and Sanders at 19%. In Ohio, we find these results. On the Republican side, Trump is at 23%, Carson at 18%, Kasich at 13%, Cruz at 11%, and Fiorina at 10%. On the Democratic side, we see Clinton at 40%, Biden at 21%, and Sanders at 19%. In Pennsylvania, we see these results. On the Republican side, Trump is at 23%, Carson is at 17%, Rubio 12%, Fiorina at 8 and Cruz at 6%. On the Democratic side, we see Clinton at 36%, Biden at 25%, and Sanders at 19%. So that's the latest state polls. In national polls, we see this report from the Pew Organization in their latest October poll. In first place is Donald Trump at 25%, Ben Carson in second at 16%, followed by Carly Fiorina at 8%, Mark Rubio at 8%, Ted Cruz at 6%, Jeb Bush at 4%, Mike Huckabee at 2%, and Rand Paul at 2%. In the Democratic race, all national polls show Clinton in the 40s. They show Biden and Sanders trading places for second and third position. But most pollsters don't feel that Democratic polls will really be meaningful until Biden either gets in the race or declares he will not run for president. Only then will the polls become more representative of the electorate. In other presidential news, from Newsmax, we get this report about Trump. Mexican drug lord Joaquin El Chapo Guzman may have issued a $100 million bounty on GOP presidential candidate Donald Trump over remarks the frontrunner has made about Mexicans. Guzman first threatened Trump with, via Twitter account purported to belong to his son Ivan soon after his escape from a maximum security Mexican prison in July. Keep messing around and I'm going to make you swallow your words, you whitey, Ivan Guzman's account tweeted in Spanish. Guzman's ire stems from Trump's presidential announcement speech on June 16th when he warned that Mexico was sending its criminals to America, including rapists and murderers, as well as drugs. He has since pushed for a wall to be built between the two countries to keep out illegal immigrants. Trump has tweeted about Guzman, too, saying, Can you envision Jeb Bush or Hillary Clinton negotiating with El Chapo? Trump, however, would kick his butt. Guzman's lawyer, Juan Pablo Badillo, replied, What is he going to do? Kick him around like a soccer ball? In news from Sacramento, Senate Republicans support signing of the Fair Pay Act, Senate Bill 358 ensures wage equality while balancing interests of employers and employees. State Senate Republican Leader Gene Fuller, Republican out of Bakersfield, issued the following statement in response to the governor's signing Senate Bill 358. The Fair Pay Act at Rosie the Riveter National Historic Park in Richmond today. I'm proud to say all 14 Senate Republicans supported the California Fair Pay Act in its final vote on the Senate floor, demonstrating our united desire to eliminate gender wage inequality in California. Women's contributions to California's economy cannot be overstated, and ending pay discrimination must be a priority, says Senator Fuller. This bill was crafted to strike a balance between the interests of both employees and employers and women in the workforce, and the ripple effect it creates will benefit all the Californians. Governor Brown signed the bill last Monday. In a story to highlight the attacks on legitimate gun stores, San Francisco supervisors successfully drive all gun stores from the city. 
When gun controllers contend that they aren't out to prohibit civilian access to firearms, but simply want responsible laws to keep guns out of the wrong hands, point them to this story from San Francisco. Highbridge Arms, a gun store operated by Japanese native Masashi Tukahashi in the gun control hotbed of San Francisco, California, last week employees at the 63-year-old store announced that it would be closing on October 31st as a result of the city's continued effort to remove lawfully held firearms from the city through intolerable re regulations. The store was founded by former NRA board member and Olympic shooter Bob Chow. Highbridge Arms is currently the only gun store in San Francisco, but they will be closing October 31st. In news from the Ridgecrest Police Department, the department is asking for the public's help in locating a trailer which was stolen recently. The trailer has a custom skeet machine mounted to it. This is a very expensive piece of equipment the local shooters need to hold their competitions. The tailgate has dialed in written on it. The owner of the property is offering a cash reward if the trailer and skeet machine are recovered. Please contact the Ridgecrest Police Department if you have any information regarding these stolen items. In local real estate news, here's our monthly report. Here's the latest on single-family home sales in Ridgecrest and the Indian Wells Valley. The recent report from the Association of Realtors show 36 homes sold in August. That is up from 26 homes in July. This means home sales are improving. The sales prices range from $25,000 to $409,000. Closed escrows show an average price for a single-family home sold in August jumped to $158,000, up from July's average of $126,000. The two lowest price sales were in the La Mirage area. Most of those sales are for half a duplex that needs total rehab. One sold for $25,000 and another sold for $46,500. The report also shows that there are 25 pending home sales. Of course, in commercial news, the excitement is the building of the new Super Walmart. The groundbreaking is set for this Friday at the building site at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And we are getting reports that there is renewed interest from potential buyers from out of the area looking at commercial property to lease and or purchase. So that's the report on how real estate is moving in the area. In news from China Lake, we get this announcement from the Naval Air Warfare Center Weapons Division. Code 4.0 recognizes their members' dedication, service, Associate Director Kimberly Bernard honored Mission Engineering and Analyst Department members with Length of Service Awards on September 28th at the Naval Air Warfare Center Weapons Division at China Lake. This is a significant milestone and we need to celebrate the dedication you have exhibited to the United States government. Bernard said, please accept this token of appreciation to thank you for your hard work and the service to the warfighter. Those honored include Timothy Froner, 35 years, Keith Wheeler with 30 years, Catherine Maddox with 35 years, Albert or Jim DeSanti, 30 years, Wayne Wilhite, 30 years, Martin Dorrell, 30 years, Brian McMahon, 30 years, and Paul Barney, 30 years. Now in case of continuous effort to provide news and information you've asked for, here are today's gas prices for Ridgecrest and some surrounding areas. Well, since my last report on Monday, gas prices went down two cents per gallon in Ridgecrest. The lowest price here is now two ninety three per gallon. As of this morning, Ridgecrest is ranging from two ninety three to three thirty nine. Lancaster is going from two eighty five to three nineteen. The Valley area is two seventy seven to two ninety nine, and the Bishop area three forty two to three fifty nine. We have one station coming in at the 293 figure and one station coming in at the 294 figure. Tune in Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays for updates. We at KCGN always suggest you shop locally to support our local economy. Remember, when you pay any sales tax out of town, you are helping those cities pave their streets instead of here. Now stay tuned for weather and sports when we come back. Thanks for staying with us. Let's go to Keith for the weather. Thank you, Tom. The National Weather Service is forecasting a risk of severe thunderstorms across portions of the desert southwest, mainly across New Mexico and far west Texas. Heavy rain could result in flash flooding across these areas. Temperatures across the nation. Carolinas came in at 68, Georgia 80, Arkansas 87, North Texas 81, Arizona 80, and Los Angeles at 76. 
for a forecast here in the IWV. Tonight, mostly clear with a low around 64. South-southwest wind, 5 miles per hour. Thursday, sunny with a high near 92. Southwest wind, 5 miles per hour. Thursday night, mostly clear with a low around 66. Southwest wind, 5 miles per hour. On Friday, sunny with a high near 95. Northwest wind, 5 miles per hour. Friday night, mostly clear with a low around 67. North-northwest wind, 5 miles per hour. On Saturday, sunny with a high near 94. North-northwest wind, 5 miles per hour. Saturday night, clear with a low around 66. South wind, 5 to 10 miles per hour. On Sunday, will be sunny with a high near 93. Sunday night, clear with a low around 65. South wind, 5 miles per hour. And on Monday, Columbus Day, sunny with a high near 91. Northwest wind, 5 miles per hour. And as a look at your forecast for the IWV, now back to Tom and the rest of the KZGN News. Thanks, Keith. And now Tom Heck with sports. And a very pleasant Wednesday evening to everyone. I'm with Justice Scott, the head baseball coach at Saracosa. We're going to talk just for a few minutes about uh, what's going on up the hill with his program. I want to tell you, though, that tonight at the college volleyball, first conference game of the Foothill Conference for the year, come watch Kim Young and her squad battle on Rio Hondo. Action starts about 5.30, so watch the news and then come up the hill and support Saracosa Athletics. All right, real quick from the baseball world, the Houston shuts out New York 3-0 last night. Boy, the Yankees sure took a dive of all people. They lost their last 8 of 10 games, really struggled down the stretch. Houston now will get Kansas City. I don't know what kind of deal that is, but we'll get Coach's opinion in a second on that one. And tonight, the Cubs and the Pirates. Now, the Pirates won 98 games this year. The Cubs won 97. Um, two of the best teams in all of baseball battling it out tonight. The winner gets St. Louis, who won the most games of anyone in baseball. They won 100 games. It'll be Jake Arrieta, the Cubs, 22 and 6, 175 ERA, and Jarrett Cole, 19 and 8, with a 2.60 ERA. Should be quite a game tonight. It'll be broadcasted on TBN starting at 5:10. All right, Coach, let's talk about uh, the dogs real quick, then we'll get your opinion on what happened with the Yankees last night and what your thoughts are for the upcoming World Series here. But uh, uh, it's been kind of half a fall season, so to say. You played Barstow the other night, and nice little group of people out there to watch, good little crowd. Um, your thoughts so far? Well, it's, uh, it's going very well. Um, it's certainly a, a big difference in this year's uh, team and last year's, and, and uh our guys were real excited to play somebody else besides Saturday ourselves games, yeah. um, on Saturday, and it went well. Um, you know, it was, it was a great night. We played under the lights, got 12 innings in, and, and uh, um, got some guys some at bats. And, and uh, again, it went well. We played well for the first time out, and, and swung the bats um, decent. And, and the biggest thing was that we gave up four in the first inning. Um, you know, they, they some of their hits fell and, and just uh, found holes. And, and but the great thing is we answered with five in the bottom half. So. Um, that's always a good sign when, when guys compete and, and uh, answer another team's uh, scores. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about uh, you know what um, you're trying maybe touch up a little bit for the year, knowing now after a year in the foothill what you need to to be com you know competitive. And I thought even last year with the group you threw together at the last minute, you guys were competitive for most of the season. And a lot of those games you could have won, just lost by a, a few runs or two. But uh, your thoughts on what you'd like to maybe put a band aid on, or you know reinforce, and then go with the strengths because I know you guys can do, run well, hit the ball. Well, well, sure. I mean, we like like you said, we were in baseball games last year to a degree, and and uh, um, ultimately um, we just we, we got better players, um, and you know we just have to get better in all aspects of the game. We we certainly offensively right now, and it's so early right now that we uh, uh, we have the potential to really swing the bat um, we got good team speed but it's it's all about pitching at, at any level it's about pitching and, and we have some guys that uh, um, will compete um, and, and have some decent stuff we just have to develop um, pitching staff as a, as a whole but, you know you need eight nine guys to roll through this league that uh, you feel comfortable with, with throwing and rolling out there um, that will compete and throw strikes okay now uh, real quick what's the rest of the schedule for the fall as far as what uh, you guys are going to do sure uh, this Saturday we, we got Taft at home um, 10.30 start, uh, and then we get on the road, uh, ABC, um, Chafee, and, and Barstow, and that will conclude, um, you know, other teams that we're playing, and we'll, we'll kick it, we'll, we'll end it off with a, 
We have a, a blue white inter squad world series under the lights and a little fundraiser and we'll barbecue and have a good time to close out the fall. Yeah, those are always fun to do. All right, coach, let's put you on the spot. Let's talk about uh, the Cubs and the Pirates tonight. One game winner take all in Pittsburgh. What do you think? Oh, I don't know. You know, it's it's uh, um, it's going to be a great game and it should be. It matches up, especially with those two guys on the mound and, and two fairly young teams and haven't been in the playoffs a lot lately. I know the Pirates uh, um, been making a run the last couple of years, but uh, um, yeah, I'd like to see the Cubs make a run all the way through this, you know, just because uh, it's been so long and, and uh, um, they're a traditional team. But, you know, it's all about pitching, especially in a one-game do-or-die and with Arietta on the mound. That's uh, the Cubs fans got to be feeling pretty good. Oh, well, they sure do. Uh, the Dodgers. The Dodgers and the Mets coming up on Friday. Well, you know, it's interesting, you know, kind of like the Yankees. The, the Dodgers uh, haven't played great towards the end, um, kind of a little bit limping their way into the playoffs, which is never – Never a good sign, but you know the Dodgers got some talent, so I think uh, um, you know I wouldn't be surprised if they win win the series. Any chance the Astros will beat the Royals? I, I think so. I think there's a real good chance. Um, several things that they uh, uh, they're young, um, which you know be good and bad. You know some people talk about experience, but you know a lot of times teams that are young and playing playing real well in the playoffs, they don't care about anything on the outside, any elements or any factors, and they they just play baseball and they got a great pitching staff. So, well, the Royals got a good staff, too, so that'll be a good series as well. Blue Jays or Rangers? Uh, I think the Blue Jays are uh, the favorite to get through this. Uh, with, the, with the trades they made at the deadline, I think that the Jays are the, uh, the team that, that should get through the American League. So, J, uh, Jays-Cardinals is what I'm uh, predicting. Uh-oh. Okay, Coach, thanks. We'll talk to you, I'm sure, again. We'll have our annual uh, Christmas <laughs> Bowl predictions uh, on down here in the fall. Coach Justice Scott, come out and support the dogs this Saturday against Taft, 1030. Come on out, free uh, parking if you can find a spot <laughs> on a busy day. And as we do some reconstruction up on the hill and also some good baseball, bring a lawn chair, a great place to watch baseball. That's this coming Saturday at 1030. I'm Tom Heck for Justice Scott. This is sports right here on KZGN. So that's some news for today. Obviously, KZGN TV know you have a choice in what you watch for your news. We all thank you for choosing KZGN TV, Ridgecrest's only locally owned community TV station. And stay with us for Ridgecrest Talk coming up next. Now watch this short clip of Dog Lovers in Texas. Getting out. Yeah, you know, they'd be seeing this same yard, they enjoy seeing the scenery.